Hey, I'm Andy Stern, project manager with BWD Construction. We're here at the Hilltop Modern talking about all things MEP today. Let's go inside and show you what's happened. MEP, mechanical, electrical, plumbing. Those are your three faculties that are gonna provide your home with the power, the heat, and uh, you know water. They all have their place, they all have their staging. First is gonna be mechanical. We run that one first because, as you can see up here in the floor trusses, their duct work is huge. It's big, it's bulky. It can't be manipulated around other things very easily, so we have to run that one first. Next one, more rigid, is plumbing. Lastly is gonna be electric, because it's got wires, it can flex around anything, and it's easily to snake through areas that are harder to get through than a pipe or the duct work for the HVAC. Not something that's typically put on your home plans. We always have our structural, our room separations, kind of our cabinet drawings, but MEP, those things aren't planned out by the architect. And that's unfortunate in a lot of times because when you have some of these homes with floor trusses in them, you really have to think about a space for this duct work. And we did that here, we planned it out pretty well with our truss engineers to be sure that we had a nice chase for these guys to run through. You also have to think about the plumbing and the electric going in, also not on plans, but it has to be there. And these guys a lot of times coordinate, especially the plumber and the HVAC, because they take up the most space as we talked about before. HVAC zone systems. This one's pretty big. We've got a pretty large upstairs and downstairs. What we're gonna have is a thermostat down here and there'll be a secondary thermostat upstairs. So each story has its own ability to control its comfort level, heat or cool. And this is important in energy code savings. You're not gonna waste a lot of energy having a home heated to 50 degrees or 75 degrees. What they're gonna do is shut down one side versus the other. So when upstairs calls for heat and downstairs doesn't, there is two separate trunk lines. You've got one running upstairs through the floor trusses and then we've got the one down running through the floor space beneath us in the crawler. And so they operate independently of each other through a damper system built into the furnace. So the one zone calls, heat goes to that zone specifically and not the other. That's pretty basic. A lot of homes these days will have zones. You can break it down into as many zones as you want depending on how much money you want to spend. Some people want each bedroom to have its own thermostat. Most people can't afford that. That's a pretty trick system, so we don't go that in depth. Here, we're just upstairs and downstairs to keep things simple. In our industry, there's a term, it's called wet walls. People are like, what's a wet wall? I don't understand what that means. Well, this case in point is gonna be a wet wall. In these walls, we use two by six framing as opposed to two by four framing because we have vents, we have water lines, we have all the plumbing, we even have some HVAC in this one too for the dryer vent. In a typical two by four wall, you're not gonna have a lot of space to run that stuff freely as you do with the two by six wall. Things get pretty crowded pretty quick when you start talking MEP placement. This is a great case right here where we have a ton of different things going on. We've got a bunch of electrical for our dryer. We've got the dryer vent run by the HVAC guys. We've got the plumber. He's got two large vents in here. Actually, one of these is for our uh, radon extraction. That's another part of MEP that we didn't touch on. But one of these is dedicated to take potentially hazardous radon gases out of the crawl space and to the exterior of the home. So that, that's a big reason why you have wet walls, where we put a two by six wall, where it may not be structurally required, but it is the functionality through the MEP process that it really helps alleviate a lot of problems there. So during the framing stages is really when we need to plan these things out. Uh, typically you can look at your plans before even getting started and see, well, I've got a bathroom backed up to another bathroom or attached to say where the mechanical room is here, the laundry room. You really wanna get those thought out and planned ahead so that you have the right materials on site to be able to frame your two by six wall. And then you're not working backwards in an afterthought when MEP shows up and you have to take out a two by four wall and put in a two by six wall because 
Well, that's just working backwards in my book. I like to plan ahead and make sure these things are thought through before the framers ever show up. So we're here in our mechanical room. You can see we've got a lot of water lines roughed in here, one of which is this one here. This is gonna be our hot water recirc line. You can see it's insulated and it's running through all the way down here. We're gonna run over into the kitchen and it makes a loop back down and around and then runs through the center of the house to be able to feed all the different areas with hot water on demand, if you will. So this recirc pump is doing just that. It's circulating your hot water through your house. So when you go to take your shower, you're not running the water for five minutes waiting for it to get there. It's out within 30 seconds, 40 seconds of you turning on the valve. You've got hot water running to your spigot. Saves a lot in energy and of course water waste. Another aspect of plumbing, obviously we all know that it's running the wastewater out of the building and into your septic or else the municipal system. One of the things that we try to plan for, but it's not always able to happen, is flushing a toilet above a bedroom. You try and change the locations of these so that you don't have the water running right by the headboard, say, because that water as it comes down the pipe is gonna make a flushing noise. So to have that kind of thought through and separated from any kind of living space or bedrooms is always a good idea if you can avoid it. Sometimes you just can't. Gas lines, we all need them in the house. They run some of our appliances. You see here, we've got a hookup for our gas cooktop going in the kitchen. If you pan over here, you can see this gas line is running. Where is it going? It's going outside. Cool thing is some of the planning that we do is to make sure our homeowners have the conveniences of not needing to fill up a propane tank. So we plumb according to that. We put a little hookup out there for his gas grill. We're on propane here. A lot of our appliances run on gas these days. Obviously the furnace is gonna be gas fired. We have an on-demand hot water heater that's gonna be gas fired. We have our super cool linear fireplace that is also gas fired. This guy right here, a lot of BTUs coming out of this one, so we had to be sure that our lines are the correct size. So when we hooked up to our propane tank outside, I talked to the guys and they made sure that we had a, a larger feed line coming into the house to be able to handle all the BTUs coming off of this, the gas grill, the cooktop, the furnace, and the hot water heater. Those are all things you gotta consider. And like I mentioned before, the convenience of not having to go to the store every time you run out of propane when you're grilling is pretty cool. Last guy in, electrical. You can see we've got a couple of panels here. This house has got quite a bit of electrical appliances and uh, features running into it. So my electricians, they were loading this one up pretty heavy. They decided that they would consolidate some of the power over here. You can only run so many circuits into one box. So they took some of these consolidated some areas and put them in a separate box. So we have these two here that are actual power. This one here you can see is the low voltage stuff. Some homes these days, a lot of people are going for security, they're going for sound, they want their whole house wired with the internet, easy access everywhere. So you bring it into a central location and then you can feed all of the low voltage throughout the home. These little guys, that's some more of our low voltage run into the garage door openers. Don't forget those. A lot of people will have a couple of Larger circuits, 220, 240. Some people want to have a welder in their garage. That's going to require some extra power. Nowadays, something to think about, EV charging stations. We've got one in over here that's going to draw a lot more power. You see this, a lot of people ask, why the little block on the switch box here? Well, that keeps your switch box set back from your door opening enough that you'll be able to run your trim around it. Then you don't have to notch for your trim. So other considerations, not just the trim by your doors. You can see over here, we've got a multi multitude of blocks on this one. A homeowner specifically wanted to have outlets and switches on either side of their beds. So we were gonna have a queen bed here. So the electricians laid it out accordingly. So off the center of a queen bed, you've got your space you need four or five blocks because there may not be a stud right where you always want it. So they do this to give them the proper spacing so that their outlets and switches are in the right areas. 
Here, we've got a main switch box that's controlling. It's gonna have three different switches on it here, working hallway lights. We're gonna be controlling some of the lights here in this office space. You can see we've also got some of our other low voltage wires running here. This is actually going to the doorbell downstairs. We had them bring it up here because this is the upstairs living location. That way when somebody comes in downstairs, they can hear them. We've also, behind us over here, got some other interesting things. This is our elevator control box area. So we're bringing in the main power feed for the elevator. We're bringing in just an outlet feed. We've got data cables, and then all of that's gonna wire into their control box, and then this is gonna go from their control box into the elevator shaft to connect to our elevator for communication purposes. We have a dedicated phone line. We're gonna have power in there to make that functional. We have passed all of our MEP inspections now. We've actually passed our final framing inspection and we are getting ready to wrap it all up here and continue on with the build, which next step is gonna be insulation.